Hello from one of the most secretive and sometimes dangerous places in the world. That's right, it's the operating room where sometimes orange colored juice can actually be life-saving. Do you know what this orange colored juice is? Well, it's the treatment for the lethal anesthesia killer called malignant hyperthermia. So what is malignant hyperthermia and what do you need to know about it? Malignant hyperthermia is when your body literally consumes itself every little muscle in your body contracts, like it makes a really strong muscle, and it makes your body temperature go up like you're doing a massive body workout. The problem is that you're not really getting swole or getting gains from this workout, you're just increasing your risk of lethal cardiac arrhythmias, kidney failure, and in general, death, because literally every cell in your body is just contracting and releasing toxic compounds into the rest of your body. The reason why anesthesia is important to malignant hyperthermia is because anesthesia gases like sibofluorine or IV agents like succinylcholine can actually trigger malignant hyperthermia. They literally trigger your body to go into this hypercatabolic state and makes every single muscle contract and releases all those toxic compounds and can ultimately lead to death. That's why we need to give you very, very special anesthesia, which is why we need to know about it ahead of time is why you need to tell us if you have a first degree relative with malignant hyperthermia because of the heritable component to malignant hyperthermia. Fortunately, malignant hyperthermia is very, very rare. It's like one in the order of 100,000 or so general anesthetics, but the mortality is real. Even in the modern 21st century, it's still in the order of 5% mortality, which is why we always need to have the orange juice immediately available anywhere anesthesia is being delivered. There's actually a very specific mixing process for mixing dantrolin, and you have to be able to do it very quickly in an emergency scenario. You have to use sterile water and mix that with the dantrolin, and it becomes this amber-orange colored juice that is the only definitive treatment for malignant hyperthermia. So, the good news is that we can treat this when it's identified early, which is why you need to tell your anesthesiologist if you have a first degree blood relative, like a brother or sister or mom or dad who has malignant hyperthermia because the gene mutation is actually heritable and you're at increased risk if you have a first degree blood relative with malignant hyperthermia. There's also a whole bunch of other things we do to support your body while you're still asleep if you're suffering from malignant hyperthermia. It's actually not just dantrolene, which is the treatment, it's also managing the ventilator and giving other medications like epinephrine to help prevent cardiac arrest from ultimately causing a heart attack or stroke. So today I ran a drill with my team here to make sure that we all know what to do should malignant hyperthermia happen. It's kind of like flying an airplane where most times everything is just fine because you've prepared adequately, but sometimes unexpected things happen like an engine failure or I don't know, a bird goes into your windshield or something and you need to be prepared with your team on how to address those catastrophic scenarios. That's what we did today. So we actually used a bunch of expired medications so we don't waste this stuff because yeah, it's really expensive. And we were able to demonstrate a mock scenario with the mannequin, with the CPR and everything, ultimately saving the mannequin's life. But I just want you guys to know that if you're ever coming into the operating room, even though there are dangers, be confident that your team knows what they're doing and your doctors have been training for years and years and years to help lead the team when these catastrophic scenarios happen. Because we can't always predict them. If we knew everyone who had malignant hyperthermia, this wouldn't be that big of an issue. But nearly all cases are in patients who are undiagnosed. It'd be pretty bad to trigger malignant hyperthermia if we knew somebody had it. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, be sure to follow and share with your loved ones. And leave comments below and let me know what other secrets you want to know about the human body so that you can control your inner healing potential.